Reva, it's Josh. I guess we do have some unfinished business. Unfinished business? What does that mean? Let me. Oh, come on. Damn you, Joshua. Damn you and your unfinished business. Reva? You know, I was having a really nice day. I hope you're not here to ruin what's left of it. I want to spend the night. What? I need to spend the night here with you. Family. Destiny. Light. Hope. Cherry. Friendship. Love. Faith. Laughter. Joy. Kindness. Understanding. Peace. Forgiveness. Happiness. Freedom. There is a destiny that makes us brothers. None goes his way alone. All that we send into the lives of others comes back into our own. Okay, so they're probably together now. And they're talking. They're talking and laughing about oh, all the fun they had together and camping trips with the kids and talking about all the times they made love. Mm hmm. In the house and on the beach, in hotel rooms, in prison. Okay. Why are you doing this to yourself? This is your idea. You're the one who sent him over there. Just deal with it. Just deal with it. Passion of love court. This is the defendant, Bob Lester. Bob's wife, Andrea, caught him in bed with another woman. But Andrea could never have guessed who that woman was. I want to uh, get out our old love letters and photographs and film. Reminders of who we've been together, both uh, the good times and the bad. Now, why would you want to do that? You already said it was over, that you made your choice. And you said that it's only a matter of time before I realize that we belong together. Oh, but you really want to do this? You want to dredge up all that stuff? You want to be opening Pandora's box? Yeah. Let's open that thing up, see what comes out, okay? Let's just lay it all out there, Reva. All the uh, reasons that we've loved being together and everything we've hated about it. And when we come up for air, what do we do then? We find out where we stand, for real. What if where we stand is that there's no more Josh and Reva? Then we shut the photo albums. We pack up the love letters, save them for our grandchildren. And what if we find out that what we have is more than just memories? Then I'm honest with myself and start to believe what everyone else believes. That it's Josh and Reva always? That we're stuck together until doomsday? Well, now there's a comforting thought. Well, here's another one. Where's Cassie? What's she going to do while you're here? You know, these bags, they're getting kind of heavy. Because I know that you have to be honest with her, Joshua, especially now. I know you. I know you want to be a minister. So I know that you need your life to be stable and solid and real. So how does Cassie feel about all of this? She thinks it's something I need to do. Unfinished business. What? Unfinished business. That's what you said on the answering machine. So? So, that's what I said to Cassie at the farmhouse earlier, that you and I had unfinished business. I know. 
So this was her idea. She sent you here. Yes. And you didn't even want to come. She said she needs this. Are you going to let me in? I have a better idea. Why don't you go straight to hell? Reva. You scared, Reva? Huh? At least Cassie has the courage to face this, you know? Chicken! You take that back. Howard. Nobody says that to me. I just did. Boy, oh boy, and I was worried about Cassie's feelings. How patronizing. She wants us to jump through hoops so that she can walk down the aisle with a clear conscience. How do you think I feel, Reba? Here I am about to throw a wedding for a woman. She calls it off because she thinks I'm not over you yet. You were going to marry her tonight? Yeah. The preacher, the food, the witnesses, the whole thing. But evidently, I don't know my own mind. I'm still under the spell of Reva Shane. I love my sister, but boy, it would serve her right if we got rip-roaring drunk. We already did that, remember? Yeah, I remember. So what do you say to a few rounds of cards, a couple shots of whiskey, and I kick you out after midnight? Deal. You remember what H.B. used to say about poker and whiskey? Poker and whiskey don't mix. Unless, of course, you're H.B. Lewis and you're holding aces. <laughs> Things were so much simpler in Oklahoma. Mm. <sighs> were we that innocent? Nothing was ever innocent with us, Reva. I got a pair of nines. What do you got? Oh... Queen High straight. <laughs> I win. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we're going to need some more chips. Huh? What do you think? Yeah, maybe, chips. maybe. Hey, 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 what do we got here? Look at all this stuff, huh? Hey, give me those. Wow. You've been looking at these recently. No, not that recently. I, I guess I didn't realize that you kept all these. I never thought... Uh... What? I never thought that what I had to say really mattered that much. At least to you. You always do what you want, right? Well, then I guess you were wrong, huh? Because what you said did matter. Everything you said to me mattered. And that's why I kept them. But then I don't throw things away. Okay, I see your letter from New York and raise you one letter from London. <gasps> London! Yeah. Ooh, I remember that. That was like your first really big trip away from Tulsa. You know, Billy and I thought that we were going to watch HB close this big deal. Instead, he throws us in the room with the client, says sink or swim, of which we did both <laughs> to a certain extent, but we ended up closing that deal. That was a first for us. <laughs> I also remember how much I missed you on that trip. Yeah. Well, you sent me a letter every day. In fact, those letters just kept coming even after you got back from London. You were so good at writing letters. I mean, you made me feel like I was right there with you. You know what? This is a good one. Mm. This is from that trip you took to Austin. Dear Reva, you belong in Austin, not Tulsa. They'd understand you down here, <laughs> but I couldn't bring myself to lose an oaky girl to Texas. <laughs> Reva, I love you so much and want to be with you. Dear Joshua, I wish you could have been at school today when Shane made his speech. I'm glad that at least I was there for once. I was so proud of him and of Reva. Let's see, dear Reva, I write this not knowing where you are or what you're doing. Or if you'll ever read these words, it seems like every time we're given precious moments together, something in life pulls us apart. 
But whenever or wherever you are, you're... I hope you're still in love with me and always will be. Love, Josh. <laughs> I think that's enough. I think my hair is bigger than yours. <laughs> 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 you look mm. pretty and white. Ah, uh, yeah. family for a while at least can I ask you a question no <laughs> do you love Cassie for Cassie or do you see Cassie and RJ as needing someone like you in in their life i mean did i become too independent did our kids get too old that's a lot of questions yeah well answer them because you said you were here for honesty if you're asking did i go out looking for another family to raise the answer is no you love cassie for cassie and i loved you for you I even loved your independence, Reva. I mean, it <laughs> drove me crazy. But I loved it. What's the problem if you love that part of me? <laughs> I know this is hard to hear. We have an amazing history together, the kind of history that most people just dream about. But my life is with Cassie. Because you love her. Yeah. Because she won't vanish on you. Or turn your world upside down every five minutes. Because you trust her. Yeah. Well, maybe we should trust what Cassie senses between us. You know, maybe... <laughs> Our history isn't history. I mean, if Cassie feels it and Billy feels it, then maybe what we have is real. Boy, I'll tell you what. I can't believe how warm it is this early in June. Maybe we should eat something. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Reba, come on, you're doing it, okay? You're doing it again. What? I hate mustard. Any kind of mustard, and yet you insist on putting mustard on a perfectly good sandwich. Who doesn't like mustard on their sandwich? I don't, Reba, okay? Since when? Why didn't you ever say anything? Well, I don't know. Maybe uh, for the same reason I never said anything about the fact that you like to flirt with any guy in pants. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, where did that come from? It's just what I feel, Reva. Well, maybe if I'd been a little sure about your feelings for me, I wouldn't have had to look elsewhere. Oh, come on, Reva. There is not a whole lot more that I or any other man on the planet could have done to make you feel secure. That's not fair. No? Well, maybe it's a little fair. 
There you go. Gee, thanks. <laughs> I would say the low point for me would be Shane's accident. To be the cause of something like that, to do that to your own child. It wasn't your fault. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. But I knew you'd never forgive yourself. How can I? You, you, you could have been angry at me forever. You, you, were, you were pretty mad about that for a while, but the fact is you could have walked away forever, and you didn't. You were there. Well, that's what you do when... One bite of this left. You want it? Yes. Yum. Looks like there's uh, just enough left for uh, one more nightcap. No, really, I shouldn't. Yeah, well, neither should I. So what do you drink to when you've drunk to just about everything there is? To whatever's next. You know what I'll never forget? Mm. I really hope it doesn't have anything to do with me because I'm tired <laughs> of everything having everything to do with me. Well, it does have to do with you, but in a sort of different way. That road trip that uh, Billy and I took to Tulsa. We talked about you the whole way. The entire trip? All Riva, all the time. Trips. Reminds me of the trip I took with Billy to Vegas. So I could die, Mrs. Billy Lewis. You should have told me. About Billy. You know what I mean. Yeah, I do. We're where we are because of that. But if I had it to do over again? If I had the ultimate do-over? Oh, no. I Don't say wouldn't it. Don't. change a thing. <sighs> Especially that night in prison. Hey, it's me. I just wanted to uh, check in on you, I guess. Let you know everything's going fine. I, I really hope that you're out tonight, maybe with a friend, Harley, somebody like that. And I also want to say that you were right. I needed this night. This time with Reva, I, uh, I don't know, doing these things that we used to do, it's not that I don't miss them or like doing them, but even in the midst of this, I miss you. And I realize how much I need you. I love you, Cassie. I do, I love you. So, Reva and I still have some things to work out, and I'm gonna stay here until we're done. I feel like I owe her that to myself and to what we were. So this is a uh, good night, Cassie. I love you. You're wrong. This isn't good night. It's goodbye. Reva. No, get the hell out of here! You owe it? 
to me to stay? You owe it to me? What's the matter with me owing you something, Grieva, with, with me thinking that you deserve something from I me? don't want your pity! I lied to you about my cancer because I didn't want you to pity me! I don't pity you. I love you. But you love Cassie more. Or, or just as much, or, or, you know, who the hell cares? It's not a contest. You told Reba, me it's... you'd give me one night, one night, without any strings attached, without any preoccupations, one night. But you couldn't even give me that without reaching out to her. Well, fine, if that's what you want, then go. Because I don't want to be around you anyway. You go and you tell Cassie that her little idea turned out just fine, that you are completely over me in every way that counts. Fine, I'm out of here. Good, go, this was a bad idea. I don't even know why I bothered Reva. This is how you handle everything. From Tulsa to Springfield, right here in this very house. And do you know why it is that you hate the fact that everything's about you? Because you are the one that makes it that way, Reva. It's all you know how to do. And the fact that that's all you know how to do is one of those things that drives you nuts. You wish you could be different, Reva. But you're not. Goodbye, Joshua. Breakfast, um, I could make some, um, uh, eggs or toast or something. No, thank you. I'm, uh, not hungry. Okay. So? I, um, I need to tell you what happened. Um, I don't, I don't need to know all the details. Nothing happened. Well, actually, that's not 100% true. Uh, a lot of things happened, but not the thing that's going through your head right now. Uh, it wasn't like that. It wasn't, uh, you know, one more time for old time's sake kind of thing. You know what we said? There were no strings attached. So I don't, I don't need to know exactly what you did do or didn't do. I did what you asked. We both did. We sorted through our past and through our feelings. We um, got drunk. We fought, argued through things, weeping, gnashing of teeth, that kind of thing. And that was it. I said goodbye and I left. And that, that took you all night? No, I uh, left a little after midnight. Well, where were you since then? You told me to take the whole night, so that's what I did. I felt like I needed it. I uh, left Rivas, drove around for a while. Um, let's see, I stopped at a truck stop. I walked around the lake. I watched the sun come up. And I thought to myself, how blessed I am to have these two amazing women in my life who just happen to be sisters. both have given me so much and taught me so much but you are the one that I want to spend the rest of my life with Cassie and here I am so if you have a problem with that
Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I just... Uh... We can stop right here. It's fine. It's not a problem. I just... I keep having this flash of you and Reva in the prison and you kissing her and holding her and... I thought that's what last night was about, though. I mean, trying to erase some of that. I... Yeah, it was. It was, and... It worked for you. I'm glad it worked for you, but I, um, I still have it all in my head, and I just can't... I've been thinking about it all night. Cassie. I just have to go. Go where? I don't know. I don't care. I just... I have to go. Cassie, oh, look, we have to work through this somehow, okay? We just... Cassie. Okay, God, what did I do to deserve these two sisters? It's about time you got here. I don't normally make house calls, Eva. <laughs> and I don't normally threaten people before 7 a.m., but if you don't want Lizzie to be a permanent enemy... All right, all right, all right, I'm here. Get on with it. Now, uh... My goodness. What's, uh... What's happened to you? You know what? Don't mess with me. One phone call and Lizzie's gonna hate you forever. So she'll do whatever you tell her to, huh? If me, a fellow cancer survivor, says so, yes. Hmm. What is this, vigilante fundraising? You come after me, I jump, is that it? I want money. A donation. A big one. Reva, I have always given to the cancer fund for years. Yes, I know. Now you'll give until it hurts. All in the name of Jonathan and Sarah Randall. Sarah Randall Spaulding. No deal. Then, no deal. Oh, Lizzie's not gonna like it. All right, all right. Five figures, that's all. Six. High six. That smells more like seven when you round up. Can't believe I'm agreeing to this. <laughs> what are these? Love letters. My goodness. What, what happened here? Nothing. Last night? Nothing. Nothing happened. Yeah. So nothing happened, and so I'm paying instead of Josh. Is that it? Yeah. Well, he's not around. Besides, I put him through enough. You know, I can't believe I'm doing this. I think I feel sorry for you. You've uh, obviously gone around the bend. And Josh obviously went back to bachelorette number two. Yeah, well, you know, we thrashed through our whole relationship, everything we've been through from A to Z. The love, the attraction, the bond. But he still went back to Cassie. I'm sorry, Reba. You know what? I'll live. You just let him go? Ooh. It's not like I could stop him. Reva, will you listen to yourself? It's like you and Cassie have switched personalities. Our business is finished, Alan. Just like yours and Josh. Yes, thank you. Good Piece of advice. Don't be a fool. And don't let Josh run the entire show. You've always gone after what you wanted. And if it's Josh you want, fight for him. My God, look at me. Beth gets pregnant by Rick Bauer. He humiliates me in front of the entire town. And yet I take her back. That's your problem. Now it's my solution. Now, raising uh, money for cancer is very noble, but it won't keep you warm at night. And neither will those love letters. Dear Reva, I'm stranded in Detroit, four feet of snow. I wish I was home with you reading a book. Nothing out of the ordinary. Of course, every day with you is extraordinary. Have faith. No matter how far away I am, my love for you remains. Always. Josh.
Okay. Hi. <laughs> I was just about to uh, call the police, or uh, I don't know, a marriage counselor, or a therapist, or an exorcist, or whatever it would take. Josh, you have me. hope that you would consider this place your own, even though Reva and I... What you had with Reva was wonderful. But it's over. It's dead. And what we have... is just beginning. Life. Time for a new fight. Huh. If I didn't know better, I would swear this was my handwriting. Faith, can you believe that? You found yours was strong last night, walking around the lake or the truck stop or... Me, I found it sitting on a bench. I hid Faith long before last night, Cassie. I know you did, but I have trouble believing in fairy tale endings now. But having faith and keeping it are, are two different things, but you, I have faith in you. And last night you gave me a reason to keep it.
This has been Guiding Light.